Let's get this show on the road. Um, <clears throat> Building on Cardano, title the space. This is clearly something we, we kind of touched a, upon it a little bit on the last space, on the, on the first space. Um, but now I kind of, I really want to dive a bit deeper on what exactly is the benefits on building on Cardano. And like I said um, in the past and in the first space together is, you know, Cardano is just one of those chains to me where um, it, it doesn't have like the attention that ETH or Solana has, right? But it's on the cusp of a growing market. It's on the cusp of getting more attention, more eyes. And I think it starts with um, marketplaces such as JPEG.store. It starts with spaces such as this one today, you know? And, and I think the more we're able to build and paint a narrative around Cardano of it, uh, not only just being useful, but you can essentially build the same communities, the same digital communities that you see on these other chains on Cardano as well, you know? So I generally just feel that maybe the market or the attention is currently in this free flow state. You know, people are just kind of figuring out where do I want to go? What are chains that I should be looking at? Um, and definitely Cardano is, is one, in my opinion, at least, right? My perspective to not fade, right? Travis, is, is there anything you want to add to that real quick? I just want to add to that, like, there's a lot less barriers than there used to be. I think people are getting right. more used to just, like, trying out new chains. They just go to, you know, simple swap, get the new wallet. You know, I think people are much more open to, you know, leaving MetaMask as, like, two years ago. No one would do anything if it wasn't on MetaMask, right? So I think... Things are just getting easier. People are open to trying new chains, you know, like not even talking about the pros of Cardano. I think it's just a good time now for people to try new things. People are just getting used to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, let's start out this conversation with you, Travis, because I, I do want to work our way around this this panel today. But just to kind of kick this off, right, um, you, you mentioned these benefits. What, if you can not go extreme detail, right, but what are the first things that you've noticed about Cardano that immediately stood out to you amongst other chains and how exactly does that maybe benefit a user if, if it benefits projects um what, what were those things to you travis like the first thing that always comes out to me is just like safety and security like i'm far less paranoid about uh making transactions clicking links uh cardano has a added level of security that uh, you know these other chains don't have that you don't need to give access to an entire contract or policy you just have to, you would literally have to agree to send them the NFT, which the wallet tells you it's sending to get drained, right? So it's it, it's just a far safer environment. You can sleep at night. You can click a link. You know, you can uh, you just you just feel better using the chain. I'm I, like I just I met uh, Peace using Cardano, and I've used like all the chains, and, and they're all scary. And then I come to Cardano, I feel a lot safer for sure. That's actually a really great point, and uh, <laughs> it's funny you mention all these because I felt that same way when I first um, found Solana, and I was like, "Wow, the vibes here, the culture, the communities are, are different, right?" And then you mentioning this about Cardano, I'm like, "Wait, so these experiences, these moments, are also happening for other people too?" And I was like, "Okay, this makes a lot of sense." So <laughs> this is why I, whenever I hear people say like, "Oh, I'm an ETH maxi, I'm a Soul maxi," I'm like. I would be cross-chain maxi. Like, why not explore all kinds of chains and, and see what benefits the most, you know? So, um, beautiful, beautiful way to start off this segment. And I actually want to point that same question to Penny. Um, and Penny, I know you kind of touched up on this last week, um, but just to kind of remind people who are new to the space, who are now just tuning into the first uh, uh, space of JPEG, um, what drew you personally to Cardano and, and what stood out the most amongst other chains? Oh, thank you so much, Bossa. Uh, I think Travis covers the main parts about security, but sort of building on top of that, I believe coming to Cardano initially, one of the factors was the green initiative that Shane was doing itself. And the bigger picture involved within the ecosystem, uh, it's a financial tool, but it's a financial tool that's also working towards creating a better world for all of us. The initiatives that uh, the Cardano Foundation, as well as a lot of the other players in Cardano have taken up, are indeed inspiring. And I think with looking at the security and the decentralized Cardano offers, it's one of the prime examples of how blockchain can be used and leveraged to do things without it being 
for the lack of a better word, corrupted by our consumerist natures, perhaps. I love that. I love that. Um, Penny, I, I don't know if that was the, the end of your take because I heard something in the background. I was like, oh. <laughs> but, uh, but no, that's a really great point, right? And I, I think, again, what we're starting to see, at least from my perspective, is people actually doing their own research on chains and learning what is the benefit of using this chain compared to this. Because it's, it's really easy for us to just be attracted, again, by these financial speculations, right? I, I think this is what I call shiny object syndrome, is where we, we're constantly looking for the next thing, the next big thing, and whether it is going to be on Cardano, whether it is going to be on Soul, ETH, whatever chain, right? People flock to wherever the tension is going to go, or, and, or more, more essentially, right, where the money is going to be. So keeping that in mind, I think we need to kind of lean more towards the tech if we want this technology to essentially make sense to a web to normie one day. Because if all we're doing, in a sense, is just chasing the next big thing every single time, every single cycle, right? There's nothing to be learned from that on a tech standpoint, you know? So, so I, I love that point, Penny. Um, I'm going to pass the same. I'm like, I want to get everyone's thoughts on this because this helps me kind of shape, um, you know, not just the, the, the topics in the today's space, but it also paints a picture in my head on how does what well, how and why did everyone choose to build on cardano right so i'm gonna go to clean nation and then handle dinketsu i'll get to you guys right after but clean nation um what what, what do you also see as far as the benefits of building on building on cardano and do you think um there are advantages that cardano offers amongst other chains yeah for sure i mean from the outright um it was for us choosing cardano there was some environmental aspect behind that but also from a point of view of um Cardano's kind of commitment to decentralization we felt it aligned with where we wanted to go longer term with our project um but actually I mean just transaction fees I think being quite low and being able to do a lot for very minimal fees was something that really enabled us to actually explore and experiment with our project early on so it would have been really really difficult for us to mint a large collection on say ethereum right when we were starting out um in terms of like just just the fees that we would have needed up front it would have been quite difficult and it just meant that we could actually explore i mean i was even testing and messing around with minting long before um we minted clonation well not too long before but you know before we minted clonation and i don't think i would have been able to experiment and explore that as much on some other chains in terms of upfront costs so that was um Definitely a huge benefit as far as I see. That's a, no, that's a great point. And, and I want to extend this conversation with you, Clay Nation, because, you know, we, we had you on the Persona space um, yeah. the other week. And um, I, I genuinely wanted to um, keep going the conversation with you, but because of the other panelists, I wanted to <laughs> include them in, right? But oh. um, since I have you here, right, um, again, there, there are things that I feel to, a, to a, like a builder perspective, right? People tend to do research on just why do I choose a certain chain, right? Yeah. Um, but, but from you, and again, Clean Nation being such, I guess, a, a, an IP, like your guys' IPs is very reliant on, I guess, who is your targeted audience, right? Yeah. And so when, when you were choosing to build our Cardano, knowing that, or maybe you didn't, but let's say that you saw the attention on ETH or Soul, right? What made you guys want to go with like, okay, we can just do the same thing, over on Cardano and build that same community. Did you have something like that in mind or was it more so of like, we're, we're just going to test things out here? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't just about testing, but Cardano was in a way home to us prior to launching the NFT project and Play Nation. And um, it's, it's really interesting because, yeah, sometimes the ecosystem, it can feel a bit small. It's definitely grown so much since even just since we launched. But when we were first starting out um, on Cardano, it felt like an opportunity to, yeah, test the waters and be kind of have an opportunity to be like slightly bigger fish in a smaller pond or maybe uh, excite, a, you know, the community. And we were actually able to reach so much more of the community than we felt that if we had just started on a huge chain with huge projects and everything else going on there, we could have easily, I mean, yeah, lots of people say, you know, why didn't you do it here or there? And it's like, 
we have no idea what that outcome would have been and we already had a great connection with the community we were, I mean at the time I was even working at IOG and um it, it's just always been it felt like the right place to start for sure yeah and again it's, it's, it's kind of like a weird feeling to explain because I mean I myself I'm, I'm launching my own project, but I'm not a dev. So therefore, yeah. like, my in, my, my inputs as far as, like, oh, we should go to this chain. Like, I have to do my own research, though, you know. Um, but I do re- uh, relate to you on the sense of, like, it just felt right. You yeah, know? I mean, um, also just yeah. seeing, sorry to, sorry to interrupt. I, no, I think go ahead, go ahead. Seeing how much potential there was and how much room to grow, that was another driving factor for us. It was, like, it just even in just in the last two years so much has happened and it feels like we did make the right decision in that sense you know we've been able to grow with the community we've been able to grow with Godano and um that has been super exciting yeah yeah I appreciate you for for your responses here I'm going to throw the same again just gathering some feedback initial feedback handle dollar sign handle um why Cardano and, and the benefits on building a Cardano what do you see sure so I'll start with uh, the initial question earlier uh of how we started here or, or why we even chose um, Cardano. When we first started, um, it was very early and the ecosystem was relatively untouched. Um, I couldn't name one dApp that exists today that was around back then. Like all of our favorite builders were just community members back then. In fact, I think we like <laughs> around that time, around the time we started, we were still wrapping our heads around like how to be a state pool operator. Um, so I think it was the fact that it just seemed untouched. It seemed pristine and clean and, and, and a place to start new. Um, and then I think over time, as we started implementing ideas and new ideas, we realized uh, just how simple it is. Um, and I think that reflects um, the very nature of, of, of handle um, and how simple it is. And, you know, we're able to leverage uh, things that Cardano... Um, has that other chains don't um i think one thing that isn't championed enough um is the native asset standard it allows us to be who we are um and again allows us to leverage the 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 simplicity of the chain um and to piggyback on i think it's travis and apologies if i uh if that isn't (laughs) the right name uh to piggyback on what, what what travis said was um the sense of security that a user has on cardano is also, in my opinion, understated. I have traveled to other chains and I don't have that same sense of security um, when I'm interacting with the chain, whether it be on wallets or whether it be um, on certain dApps. Um, there is sort of this, uh, like, um, I'm safe here when I interact financially. And if I'm going to be uh, my own bank, I'm going to be in charge of my own funds, I feel safe in this ecosystem and I think that's one of the biggest uh, one of the biggest proponents for Cardano itself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, security in general, though, right, is like probably one of the most important aspects of operating and building here in Web three. I think I don't know if we have all had friends before where we try to onboard them and then they tried to mint an NFT and then either ended up being a rug or they lost all their money in one go. Uh, and that that genuinely changes people's perspectives on the space as a whole. So. Um, I, I definitely, definitely relate to that handle, and, and I appreciate you sharing that. Um, I'm going to Dinketsu. Dinketsu, man. Um, can you also just kind of ex- uh, describe and explain um, the benefits on, on what exactly Cardano brings, maybe particularly to Dinketsu, and, and why Dinketsu choose to build on Cardano? Go ahead. Yeah, look, I, I think everyone uh, has uh, stated some great, great points, right? I think security decentralization, uh, the tech behind it, uh, all of those aspects are fascinating and, and they make Cardano very, very unique. Uh, but one other thing that all of them perhaps in tandem have resulted in is the organic nature of the community on Cardano. And that's it's very interesting because the passion and zeal perhaps in a in a positive light is is in my opinion second to none in terms of you know if someone has been on cardano going back to you know 2021 when we launched 
and is still around, they really, really are passionate about the tech. They're really passionate about the fundamentals of decentralization. And it's perhaps those fundamentals uh, ingrained and inbuilt into the infrastructure that enable the community to thrive so much. Uh, and of course, you know, I mean, w we as a project are on, on multiple chains, we're on Polygon as well, uh, but it's a very, very different community. Uh, and that's not to say that other chains don't have amazing communities, but there is this unique element within the Cardano community going all the way back to like, uh, you know, 2018, 2019, before NFTs were a thing. The passion, uh, I think it was Penny who touched on it earlier, you know, this, this firm belief uh, in this view and, and, and in this system that is for the greater good, you know, and, and that sets the basis up for how organic and how passionate the community is. And I think that that in itself, along with what, what all the other panelists have said, uh, makes the chain extremely unique. And I think that was also one of the key reasons we, uh, you know, opted to jump on, although two and a half years ago, uh, it was very, very different, of course, as compared to what it is now. No, thank you, man. Really, really do appreciate uh, your response here. And um, here's, here's what I'm gonna do. Here's what I'm gonna do because we, we have multiple projects on today's space. I, I want I want these projects to also have time to just kind of explain um, what they're building at this you know current ecosystem. What what are what, what are their objectives, right? But before we get into that, um, I want to toss this back to Travis because Travis, you're bringing up some really great points, and that's essentially what kicked off um, today's conversation, right? Um, so let me pivot a bit. Can we can we explain on how, let's say, because we're talking about benefits, right? But one of the things that I'm looking into, as spe specifically this year in 2024, is interoperability and, and cross-chain communication. Because especially in gaming, and something that maybe you know I myself am looking forward to is when are we able to transfer assets from a Solana video game to then have it work on an ETH chain? Or, and the same way goes back and forth with all these other chains. Because, again, maybe that to me is a step towards onboarding mass adoption. Just because, I don't know, from a Web2 perspective, I'm assuming that your traditional gamers and, and people, what they've always wanted to do is take a character that they've played in this game, transfer it over to this other game, and, and still be able to play it the same way as possible. Now... I know the tech here in blockchain can eventually and someone reach that. But Travis, I want to hear from you is just how does Cardano essentially focus on that interoperability aspect and does it enhance that potential for cross chain communication if projects were to build on Cardano as a platform? I think like there's been a lot of steady progress to make Cardano just much more interoperable with all the chains. I believe a proposal just got passed in Catalyst to get MetaMask added, like having Cardano added. I think like it's a general focus for a large part of the industry. It's a big focus at JPEG Store, make everything easier access, more interoperable. To to have something as fluid as you described, like in a game from four different blockchains, you know, I think the whole industry is, is still quite a ways from that. But I think that kind of is the future that whether they be on separate blockchains, the average user doesn't know the difference, right? Like in a video game, like it just doesn't matter. So hopefully we get there. I don't think Cardano is fighting that as a, as a whole, as a conscious. I think they're, they're willing to be more open. It's just things are built differently generally on Cardano. So it's definitely an added level of difficulty uh, just from the ground up. But I, I don't see any like any like core team fighting it, trying to break away. I, I think the future is cross chain interoperable. Even this year, you really see the addition of like simple swap and those kind of exchanges. It's so much easier to move liquidity around exchanges now. You're not getting railed on fees. It's quite affordable. 
So I think just the whole industry is becoming more fluid together, and I think it's just going to keep getting better. Yeah, no, those are really good. I mean, I'm going to toss this right over to Penny. Penny, to add on top of what Travis just shared, um, do, do you think that interoperability, I mean, it's essentially being painted right now, but how can you maximize the potential? Yeah, sorry, go ahead. I think it's being painted, but I think it's also one of those areas where the core ethos of a technology make it to be something that it ends up fighting one of its use cases. And <clears throat> to sli slightly explain that better, because we fight for a decentralized system, means every chain had its own consensus systems. Every, For example, we have CIP standards in Cardano on, for example, how we deal with metadata within an NFT. Ethereum tends to follow its own standards. Solana has its own. They're similar, but they're all slightly different. When you talk about interoperability, one of the things that is a reality is interoperability will not will will become a thing when there are parties that act as the funnels or the pathways, bridges between these entities, and they will end up becoming decision makers on what the standards ends up being and how, for example, things go from one standard to the other. I pick up an Ethereum NFT and I want to bring it to blockchain, making sure that the asset I bring to Cardano is best read here. And we want decentralization, but this part requires a certain amount of centralization or at least a collaboration between the larger players in the space so they can come together and reach consensus. And I think similar to, for example, what Travis was referring to with SimpleSwap, I think as more and more bridges start getting made and people require interoperability, there will be players that will raise their hands to act as a liaison on taking us through a guide of how do we make our standards so that the users of a blockchain can take its asset to B blockchain without having the bridge do hundreds of different steps of translating their data for them. So I think with this sort of pump, in the last sort of pump of the bull market viewer, playing around with the basics. I think this time around, when we start to pick it up, we'll talk about, hey, now we're all going up. Uh, the tide is raising all ships. How do we make it so that we can collaborate with one another? And I'm super excited to see which major players sort of hail their hand up to help us through that journey. And we as JPEG Store will try our best to help all of the NFT exchange uh, creators out there if they ever wish to go down that journey as well. Oh man, it, and I, I'm glad you mentioned that last point because one thing that I'm super passionate about is like the creator economy that's blooming in, in, in Web3 right now. And I know sometimes creators, or I don't know, maybe I'm just not doing enough research again, right? It's like, are there Cardano creator, creators? And if so, right, can can ETH creators, can soul creators, whatever you want to like label us as, right? Um, can we also spy, spotlight these other communities? And I think that's the most powerful part about Web3 is the ability to shine the, the attention, share the spotlight with other chains. And, and I think that's why we're seeing, um, for example, like D-Gods and, and Utes, right? These guys have bridged from almost ETH and Solana to Ordinals at one point, right? So I would want to see more, I guess, of that practice being in, in, initiated, but also on a creator sense, um, because I, I, I believe in this thing that creators are essentially the middleman between these companies, these brands, and the audience, right? Um, and, and I would love to see Cardano get more of that spotlight. Um, really great points. And funny enough and crazy enough, we have already reached the half hour mark in today's space. Time is flying, and that's how I know I'm really, really enjoying this conversation. So that being said, if you are also enjoying this conversation, a repost, like, comments, all that goes a very long way. Hey, and I noticed, did X update its it's ui again like usually the bottom right is a uh, is a text bubble but for me it's like this plus sign and when i tap on this plus sign it <laughs> provides me the space like elon man just keep it the way it was everything was beautiful um anyways anyways i want to segment now into clay nation dollar sign handle and dink Hansu because i do want them to kind of just share a bit on what exactly are they building with their project and again i myself i'm going to do more research on cardano projects because 
where the say what is it saying it's like you don't don't skate where the puck is you skate where the puck will be and i think the puck will eventually be on in <laughs> and the attention will be in cardano right so i'm i'm going to be skating towards cardano in, in the coming weeks coming days but i do just want to let clay nation and, and these beautiful projects to kind of just get the spotlight in today's space and share a bit about what they're building that being said clay nation i want to start with you um and just to keep it simple for those who are just now discovering uh about you who clay nation is maybe we can start there um if you can kind of just introduce what is clay nation who is clay nation what exactly you guys are building um and then we'll go from there go ahead Sure. So, Clay Nation is, in essence, a multi-dimensional animation project. Um, we started as a clay animation project, an NFT project, um, and we have grown into much more than that. Um, our vision is for Clay Nation to be a playground, really, for anyone who wants to create, connect, and explore. Um, and I guess, longer term, our vision is for Clay Nation to develop as a virtual festival environment, um, for it to be a really inclusive space for users and you know collectors alike to explore a virtual world um which is actually molded together with the population so we actually really want the community to be a huge part of of what we're developing and what we're building and um then even longer term we want to be able to open our doors um to expand to host virtual events physical events um accessible to both clay nation nft holders and you know guest pass holders um but i i think at the moment um, we have a huge, a huge development goal ahead of us, and, and we're working towards that. And um, that is for all of our kind of immersive realities and goals to to be brought to fruition. And um, in the meantime, we're releasing more like mini games, smaller experiences, smaller immersive environments, so that we can get the community feedback as we go. So if you wanted to join Clay Nation right now, um, you can do that by having a Clonation NFT and then accessing these mini games. But you can also just be part of our community, which is already really vibrant, you know, through our socials and content as well. Because um, I remember this from the Persona space. You're the PFP on the Clonation account. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's actually clay. It right? is, yeah. Yeah. So that is we, crazy. Yeah. We created, uh, so I always kind of ramble. I, uh, I always mess up the elevator pitch because we've become a lot of things and they, they do amalgamate into one and like, it's really exciting and there's like lots going on but then at the same time I'm like okay if I'm just trying to explain this in a few sentences I definitely need to, <laughs> to iron that out but um yeah we started off as fully just clay animation and then when the community grew and the demand grew we launched the NFT collection and that is entirely made from clay and then um as part of our gamified and more virtual environment experiences we um allowed every NFT holder to claim a 3D model, which was not made of clay, but in digital. And those models are rigged and avatar. Sorry, I live near water, so that was a boat. <laughs> and sorry if you heard that, it just distracted me a little bit. Um, so yeah, you can use those 3D models in our mini games already, and you can also use them in things like VR chat, in um, basically anything where it's compatible. And we've tried to make them as compatible as possible. Right. Um, they've even been voxelized now, so their voxelized versions are available on Polygon and you can use those in the sandbox and we're working to really actually just make them usable wherever people want to use them. That's the main thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned mini games. Are these games playable on on your, uh, I guess, website? Where, where can we find these games? Yeah, so if you, at the moment, um, our mini games are in like alpha stage. So if you have a Clay Nation NFT, you can join our Discord and we have a channel called The Kiln which is basically a hot pot testing environment. So yeah, at the moment there are two experiences. There's Clay Falls and there's a the early, early version of the shopping area inclination to explore, but it's, as I said, very early, so you might not be able to do it unless you have a really good computer. But Clay Falls is a lot more um, op optimized and accessible. And yeah, if you, if you want to, I'd be more than happy to lend you a, an NFT so you can jump in. Yo, what? That'd be crazy. I would literally love that. Um, and, and just a question, a question, does holders get IP rights? Yeah. Beautiful. 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 Love it. I love it. I love it. Um, wait, wait, wait. I have to keep, I have like a couple more questions. Yeah. Um, throughout the entire collection, is, is it all like, just like the PFP that you're wearing, is everything also just like hand molded into that PFP for everyone else? 
So every single trait has been made in clay, and then we've used algorithm obviously to layer the traits so that there are the right. combos. Um, but it was definitely a lot of fine tuning, and um, yeah, every single trait is made of clay. So that oh, was the, the main thing, that's and that's, that's throughout our collections. So um, yeah. our, our good Charlotte collab is also all made of clay, and any anim- yeah. a lot of the animations that we share are all stop motion clay animation as well. Love it. I love it. Let me ask you like a, I guess like a, a hot seat question, right? Uh-oh. Um, and, and this is not even that hot to be honest, <laughs> if I'm going to be real with this question, right? It, it's more just like a general consensus. Um, what are your thoughts on just the current Web3 ecosystem? Do you find anything wrong as far as operating and building within this space right now? And if you do, what changes would you like to see? Okay. So my thoughts on the current Web3 ecosystem are, that it is still evolving rapidly um and sometimes that means endless possibilities and there's lots of opportunity a lot of growth and um we're kind of seeing so much that is reshaping the digital landscape so for for those reasons it's super exciting at the same time it's hard to keep up because um actually you mentioned earlier you know people are very in the web3 landscape people are interested still i think in following what's hot um, right now and sometimes that means people's interests and ascension span can be a bit all over but I think um, the actual opportunity in Web3 right now is unlike any other opportunity in my opinion and I'm um, like honestly I think we're all so fortunate to be here in this moment and um, there's so much potential so yeah at the moment we're all laying the groundwork and uh, it's going to be a super inclusive and digital future and I'm excited about it yeah yeah that's no, a really great it's funny because I, I say the same thing to a lot of my creators that are not in Web3, but they're in Web2. I'm like, yo, you need to come and do exactly what you're doing in this space instead. Because digital communities, the way that we're able to like foster an audience, um, it's different, man. Like yeah. on Web2 platforms, like I feel like you're just limited to like being labeled as a follower. Like when, pe- when people have like 100,000 followers, like that's it. Right. But are you really like activating those followers as you would do here in Web3? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It it would be completely different if it was that. Like um, if I came onto a space and I said like, oh, you know, um, we have a really we have loads of followers. Like it would just. Yeah. Right. You know, we have a large community. And yeah, absolutely. It's so important for us to activate that community, keep that community engaged and, um, you know, really connect with them. Um, because ultimately it's also helping us to shape the projects. Whereas if it was just people, you know, just clicking follow and nothing more then you know, it would be that nothing more. And it's, it's definitely something to tap into for, um, for others. I think that there's that gap, but yeah, slowly, but surely. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't want to keep calling you clay nation. I keep, and I forgot your name from what you mentioned personally. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> my, my name is clay, is clay nation. No, it was <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. It's um, it's Lena. Lena, all right, yeah. beautiful. I'm, I'm one, of the, one of the co-founders, but uh, usually on the spaces, it switches between myself and Izzy, who's another co-founder, and then um, yeah, our team is actually around at the moment around twelve people, twelve full time, and uh, yeah. Wow. So it's beautiful. usually us on the spaces, but I'll, I'll let you know if the names change. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. I'll, I'll know right away from whoever unmutes and speaks, right? <laughs> beautiful. Okay. Lena, a.k.a. Clay Nation. Um, first of all, to everyone in the audience, shoot Clay Nation a follow. Um, beautiful, beautiful IP with a beautiful team. Um, and Lena, I look forward to having you in more spaces. Um, again, I, lo- I love the way you carry yourself. Very great takes. Um, Thank you. That, I come on one right after this. So stick absolutely. Oh, there we go. There we go. The answer is already, yeah. question's already answered. I love it. Love it. Moving forward, moving forward. I do want to get to dollar sign handle Denketsu. Um, let's go, let's go start, let's start with Den, uh, Denketsu and then uh, dollar sign handle. You will be our, our final guest here. Right. But Denketsu, um, <clears throat> I, again, I, I'm kind of just scrolling, first of all, through the profile. And I must say the first thing that caught my attention was the artwork. I love Again, maybe it's just me being biased because I love anime. But whenever I see anime uh, art done right, I'm like, yes, this is exactly what I want to see. You know, but then Ketsu, kind of like a similar way that Clay Nation had introduced themselves. If you don't mind, I'll kind of do like a quick little TLDR on who you guys are, uh, what project are you building, and what, yeah, what are you guys planning to contribute in this space? Go ahead. Yeah, thanks a lot, Nate. Um, and essentially, to summarize it or keep it simple, Denketsu is a multimedia experience that incorporates everything from 
music, NFTs, gaming, uh, comics, lore, art, and essentially uh, integrates blockchain into that. So, you know, we've been around for a while, 2021, uh, done a whole bunch of things, but the core idea of Donketsu, which is very relevant to what you were saying earlier was the idea of how you can activate uh, fans or an audience to not just be secondary to the multimedia that is being delivered, but rather participate in uh, any sort of form of media. So whether that's music, whether that's books, whether that's animation, whether that's gaming, whether that's NFTs, uh, through and through uh, with each of these different uh, aspects or different uh, products, you know, the, our NFT holders have been involved in a, something as simple as picking uh, traits or suggesting traits for an NFT collection all the way to voting on the next outcome in the comic book and then the winning vote showing up in the next chapter. Uh, so that's essentially what we have done over the past, you know, couple of years, uh, three, 400 pages of comic, uh, community involvement, five songs, community help write lyrics. Uh, we've even got a couple of community members who've come in and, uh, you know, played an instrument or anything of that nature. Uh, and we're also a cross-chain project. So we are on uh, one of the first on Cardano that decided to, uh, on the NFT side at least, to expand to another chain and build out a dApp that functions between both chains. So our idle game is live between Cardano and Polygon uh, at the moment. And, you know, a lot of projects, uh, which I think, as you also mentioned, is super important, talk about uh, content creators. We're sort of more focused on the creatives. So we have three or four community members who've made their own mangas, uh, you know, 300 pages of fan fiction story, all that jazz. Uh, so it's it's been amazing. And, and you know... Even though we are in Australia, we've, uh, well, at least the founders, uh, we've gotten to go around a bit and actually meet a lot of the community in person as well. Uh, and I think expanding out from Cardano has not only opened the doors for us, but it's also enabled a lot of people to come in to Cardano and, and experience the chain as it is, which has also been fantastic. Uh, so yeah, that's another key part of it. And I think, um, yeah, big news coming soon, but we signed a major, major contract as of yesterday with, uh, furthering our goal of web three and web two integration. And we're sort of, yeah, uh, it's, 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 it's a big breakthrough, uh, for us. And I think generally the ecosystem at large, and in the next few weeks, we'll be dropping a lot of info on that front, but super, super excited. Uh, you know, our goal has been from the very start to take Danketsu, uh, and make it into an animated series. And we're getting closer and closer to that. Yo, <laughs> okay. Hold on, Danketsu. Hold on, hold on. You got to backtrack here for a bit. Um, you mentioned anime series, you mentioned partnership, um, and you mentioned Web 2, Web 3 integrations. That, first of all, one of my biggest things that I want to see with anime IP here in Web 3 is eventually for these IPs to be put, uh, potentially streamed on like Crunchyroll, on Netflix, like all these big Web 2 streaming platforms because that's when I'll know that Web 3 has made it, but also specifically anime IP has made it into a web two into the web two world and i think that is the biggest thing for me when it comes to uh ip distribution is how are we able to get out of this bubble that we're building here in in in, in x in this little tiny you know crypto community so then eventually years from now right reach mass adoption through tangible items or or these things such as you know anime series whatever it may be 
Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna pick your brain a bit. I'm gonna pick your brain a bit. Why? Why did you choose Polygon as your partner chain? And and what what made you not want to go with any other uh, any other other chain? Yeah, uh, look, great, great question. Um, to be very honest, you know, we were looking at uh, this. So this was about eight or nine months ago now. Uh, not just opportunities in terms of tech per se, uh, because as a as a layer two, you know, um, Polygon is pretty solid. Uh, in terms of, you know, I mean, their, their real world partnerships, Reddit, Starbucks, uh, uh, DraftKings, all of that speak for themselves, right? So that was a big driving force. Uh, on top of that, I think it was also the team there, uh, who were very different to what we're used to, not necessarily in a good or bad way. It's just works differently, right? Uh, and the sort of access that it gave to us. So, you know, for example, we're doing some stuff with Immutable now in relation to our game. Uh, we have, you know, we are talking about uh, the transfer of assets securely from one chain to another. I'm in conversation with Chainlink now on a regular basis, who, of course, are not on Cardano yet, uh, yet being a keyword. I can't say anything on that front, but um some of these opportunities opened up for us and overarchingly, I think that in the end, it not just benefits Denketsu as a project, but uh, the whole Cardano ecosystem as a uh, enlarge essentially, uh, because now these conversations are taking place, uh, people are being connected to one another. And uh, I think Polygon definitely opened up that door for us because it almost works as a, uh, secondary layer to, well, that's what it is, right? A layer two to Ethereum. Uh, but a lot of the volume comes from people who are on Ethereum and are sort of having to go and then try out uh, Polygon or do things on Polygon to save on gas. Uh, but those guys are focused on partnerships and you can leverage those. And it definitely opens up that, cross-chain interoperability, but it also enables or is enabling us to really sort of start moving beyond the idea of just one or two blockchains and going, uh, you know, not taking your collections, but being able to build your games and your dApps across multiple chains at once. Right, right. Man, that is absolutely huge. Again, guys, um, we, we, we have about 10 minutes left in today's space, and I do want to set some time for, for dollar sign handle here. Um, but Dinkatsu, man, I need a separate space for you because <laughs> I have so much questions that I want to ask. But um, to everyone again in the audience, please follow all these amazing projects up on this stage, man. Even even JPEG, even Penny, all these beautiful panelists because what we're hearing in today's space, well, first of all, an hour is not enough, but I will say that in coming spaces, Best believe that we're going to be highlighting more of these beautiful Cardano uh, based projects and just so much more to come. Um, Denketsu, thank you so much for, for your, um, your takes there. I want to throw this um, to Dollar Sign Handle and allow him to kind of just share a bit on what they're doing and what they're building as well. Dollar Sign Handle, please go ahead. Sure, thank you. Um, right, so Handle is in this state of evolution wherein when we started, the product was simple in nature, where all we wanted to do was take an address um, and simplify that down to human form. Um, and pairing that with a simple, simple implementation uh, by leveraging uh, the native asset standard on Cardano, which in consequence gave us a simple user experience. Um, now, what this simplicity has allowed us to do is have this foundation of nearly 60,000 uh, individual users and 250,000 handles um, to start to create um, features and add-ons to a handle um, that allow users to do multiple different things on Cardano. And some of these things include... Uh, our sub-handle protocol, um, which will allow certain dApps to 
issue user specific usernames cheaply and efficiently, um, or possibly um, individuals who may have a use for multiple wallets, like lenders, market makers, um, even family members who want to have other families um, to cheaply and issue. Um, Subhandles. Uh, we have things like we're building upcoming, which we just got funded for in Funda 11, uh, Handle Chat, um, which is a point to point encryption uh, communications layer, um, which will be built. Um, sorry, can you guys? Yeah, 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 I know. We can hear you. I was like, whoa. <laughs> I was like, what's going on here? Oh, no, we can hear you, but everything good? Oh, no. Do we, ha do we have him? Oh, I hear you. Handle. No, handle, no. Don't make me play this. Oh, wait, that's the wrong sound. Where's my sound? Oh, here we go. Oh, handle, handle, drop, dro handle. Drop off real quick. If you can hear me, drop off real quick from the stage and then hit that request button. I'll bring you right back up, I promise. Uh, guys, here we go again. Typical Elon, um, typical Elon X space rugs. You know what I'm saying? Um, so he'll be back. He'll be back. It's getting hey. better, but it's still, it's still <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, I do want to allocate at least two minutes here to Penny and the JPEG um, team, Travis or Penny. Any updates regarding JPEG that's stored? And um, as far as uh, alpha announcements, we'd love to hear anything. <laughs> Thank you so much, boss. And we're gonna uh, wait for Hannah to come back as well. In the meanwhile, I'll share a few things. Uh, part of our roadmap has been focused on this for a while, and I say this. I said this today. I said in the previous space as well that the last bull run was about the basics, and now we're starting to get to the more feature-rich parts. And I think one of the major focuses we will continue having a JPEG store that we even currently are working towards is ensuring that the Cardano space and specifically JPEG store is ready to handle the volumes that the next bull market can bring. <clears throat> In the previous bull market, as we've grown, we've made things better, we've made bulk operations available across the major spectrum of buying and selling operations you can do. But day in, day out, one of the things our team co continuously keeps working on is how can we keep pushing that barrier? For example, at this moment in time, you can sell 50 at a time and buy 50 at a time. And we're looking to push that boundary all the way up to 100. And over time, work on UI and user experience upgrades that allow for more seamless bulk transactions. So that is a focus of JPEG Store to ensure that as this space grows and all of the creators, be it Handle, Clay Nation, or Danketsu, we create a store that is worthy of their work as well as is able to provide volume without the technicalities that come with the EUTXO model that we do in Cardano. So we've implemented uh, transaction chaining, we've implemented bulk actions, and our teams working behind the scenes and making things go faster for everyone trading in Cardano. And guys, again, if I think if I were to summarize Cardano in one word, it's just efficiency. Like you guys are all efficient with, with everything you guys are building on this chain. So I'm like, dude, this is, this is so slept on such slept on alpha. Um, Penny, thank you for that amazing, amazing, uh, quick take. Um, I'm going to throw this really quick to handle. Cause I know we are tight on time here. Handle anything as far as, alpha announcements you want to share on the behalf of what is going on go ahead apologies for dropping off i realized i'm i'm also while speaking through my phone also on my desktop oh. and i mistakenly joined the uh joined these spaces from the desktop and it like kicked me off of my phone um but we're back now um in terms of alpha or anything upcoming um if we're sticking directly to the development roadmap, um, it's finishing off the subhandle protocol, um, which could launch here in the next couple of quarters, and then starting on uh, the handle chat protocol. Now, one of the things um, that will come with handle chat, uh, being that it will be um, 
at start a decentralized protocol is uh, the launch of our handle token um, and the incentives that come with running the nodes uh, to operate things like handle chat. Um, and so we're working with our uh, tokenomics team and our lawyers um, to properly set up um, that entire procedure. Um, so no dates yet, uh, but at some point there will be a, a handle token economics, you could call it, within the governance system of handle. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful said. Um, and again, we're about two minutes remaining in today's space, but I'm going to remind everyone once again, please follow all these beautiful, amazing projects, guys. Again, this is just one space out of the many to come where you will be hearing from them um, in, in future spaces. Um, Dinkatsu, Clay Nation, Handle, thank you guys for all setting time aside again today to make it into today's space on the behalf of jpeg.store. Um, Penny, I know you close us off with uh, announcements in alpha. I'm going to pass this to Tra Travis for some closing thoughts, closing words, anything that you just want to say to the audience today, Trav. Interestingly enough, Travis won't be able to hear you. Travis and Travis is not here. <laughs> <laughs> no, Travis just DM'd me, his application crashed, so he can't hear anyone here. <laughs> so I'm going to be uh, answering on Travis's behalf. What was the question, boss? If you can repeat it, it, it was just closing words. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Twitter getting in the way of spaces as always. Uh, just would like to really thank the entire team from Unfungibles. Thank you everyone who tuned in to listen. We have a few big spaces lined up with Unfungibles and as you guys stay tuned, JPEG Store is getting prepared to release some more features and some more alpha in the coming ones as well. Thank you so much for joining in and thank you so much for being here. Specifically, want to thank Clay Nation, Ida Handles, and Tanketsu for coming up and giving us their time as well. Beautiful. Beautifully said. And again, guys, we host these spaces every single Tuesday, um, 8 a.m. Pacific, which I believe is 11, no, 12, I can't do math, 11, 11 a.m. EST. Um, so please set those reminders. Follow the jpeg.store page. And again, guys, I wish you all a beautiful Tuesday, and we will see you guys next week. Thank you, guys. Peace out.